This is Lime Stark, and in this video, we will be looking at economic development in the reign of Henry VII. So to look at this, we will look at farming, industry, trade, and early exploration. But first of all, we will look at what England was like in 1485. Because with exception to some of the countryside, England was an extremely different country than it is today. Now there was a population of approximately 3 million, which is extremely small, and 90% of these lived in rural areas. As it is today, London was the largest city, yet it only has 60,000 residents, and that's compared to 8.8 .8 million today. Now other larger towns included Norwich, which had 12,000 residents, and Bristol and York, but it still had a significantly small population. So first of all, we will look at farming, and much of agriculture was under the system of open field husbandry, as it had been for many, many years. And open field husbandry was where fields were divided into strips of land, and tenants were able to use this land for keeping animals or other types of farming. However, Henry VII did also face some problems, and one of the main problems he faced was enclosure. And enclosure is where land was fenced off, which ended the common rights of land. Now this ultimately deprived some tenant farmers of their land, and left many peasants destitute. So to solve this, Henry VII did pass an anti-enclosion law in 1489, and although it made diff a little difference, enclosed land didn't increase, and it did only offer a minor problem compared to other Tudor monarchs where it was a major problem. Now, other uh, problems that Henry VII faced was the fact that income from land had started to decline after the Black Death, and the fact that um, there was a lack of profit from arable farming, and he had to instead go to sheep farming because of a demand for wool. Now, ultimately, this left many peasants extremely poor because of their losses of land, which they had been used for arable farming. However, overall, there was a slight recovery in the time of Henry VII. So next we will talk about industry, and the main industry in England was the cloth trade, and the cloth trade was responsible for 90% of English exports. It also experienced a 60% increase throughout Henry VII's reign. Now after the cloth had been initially finished, there were other opportunities for dyeing and weaving, and this meant that cloth towns such as Lewis and Lavenham were extremely rich. Now, other industries were extremely small, however, and they required little capital investment, which is why the cloth trade was so big. And the only one which came close to rivaling the cloth trade, yet still remained extremely small, was mining. And mining allowed the production of tin, lead, and coal. And coal in particular was useful for growing the growing demand of industrial fuel in London, and it was also exported to Germany and Netherlands. However, the main thing was about the fact that the cloth trade was just so big and just accounted for so much of English exports. So the penultimate thing to talk about is trade. And as the cloth trade was so big, this cloth was usually exported from London through the Merchant Adventurers. Now the Merchant Adventurers were founded in 1407 and they were a trading association who had created strong links with Antwerp. Now Antwerp was basically the trading capital in the world. Now they also had a strong relationship with the crown and this allowed the merchant adventurers to be the voice of industry as well as being influential when negotiating trade treaties. Now they would export the English cloth to Antwerp where it was then exported all around Europe and transported around. However, they weren't able to achieve total trade domination because Henry VII had signed a treaty with the Hanseatic League in 1504, which meant they de didn't offer support to the Earl of Suffolk. Now, this shows that although Henry VII was keen to maximise these custom revenues, he was also willing to sacrifice trade in order to uh, ensure security. Now this was again shown in 1493 with a trade embargo with the Netherlands, and this ban on trade was brought about after Margaret of Burgundy offered support to Perkin Warbeck. Now this meant that England merchants were forced to direct their trade through Calais, and this embargo eventually ended with signing of Intercursus Magnus in 1496. Now, Intergus and Magnus was an extremely influential trade deal, which meant that English merchants were able to export to any part of the Duke of Burgundy's land except for Flanders. 
However, in 1503, the Earl of Suffolk was once again being taken more seriously, and Henry VII attempted to introduce the trade embargo once more. Now, the only reason that he didn't was because the Intercursus Malus was signed in 1506 in fortunate circumstances, even though this trade deal didn't actually end up going through. Now, other small trade treaties were signed, yet it was clearly insignificant in response to Hemi's other aims. And other treaties included the Treaty of Attap, which improved relations, trading relationships with France, however it wasn't only a trade deal. And the Navigation Acts in 15, uh, 1485 and 1489, where only English ships could uh, export certain products to and from England. So finally, I will talk about exploration. And exploration was a big theme in the Tudor times when many new lands were found. And in other countries such as Spain and Portugal, sailors had explored much of the world and the spice trade was already extremely successful. However, English sailors were much slower to engage in exploration, yet they started to entertain the possibility of a transatlantic discovery. And John Cabot was the main man in charge of exploration, and he arrived in Bristol in 1494. And this was at the same time as fishermen were looking to alternative places after being excluded from the Hanseatic League. And he received authorization from Henry VII to search any isles, and in 1497 he managed to discover Newfoundland. Now this was fairly successful, but in the following year he set off on another voyage in which he never returned. And his son Sebastian led an unsuccessful attempt to Asia in 1508, yet when Henry VIII took the throne he showed no enthusiasm for exploration. So exploration, there was sight of exploration in this time, however you really have to wait for Elizabeth I's era to really start getting more exploration and more countries are founded, especially as Henry VIII did not care at all about any exploration. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon. Bye.